Dear Livy, I don't know if you know this, maybe you do, but since you were born, I've been keeping a diary of your life to remember the sweet little moments that make you, you. So while everyone watching this surely loves you very much, they might not know you quite as well as I do. So I want to share a few excerpts from your journal that I think might shed some light on what it's been like to watch you grow up. March 10th, 2004. Today, Lovey is five weeks in one day. So much has already happened. He's had his Brit and his Pigion. He does so many cute things like that funny noise when he sneezes. And he's a genius. He started smiling at four weeks. Everyone who sees him thinks he's the most beautiful baby. March 23rd, 2004. Lavi loves his uncle so much that we think he might be confusing Uncle Shmuel for me. When he cries, only Shmuel can calm him down. April 1st, 2004. We forgot to wash Lavi for a few days. Now his head is covered in pimples. Ah! June 12th, 2004. Yesterday I took Lavi to visit his Elta Elta Bubi, his great great grandmother. She was crying and enjoyed Lavi so, so much. March 20th, 2005. Lovey loves animals. Every time he sees a dog or a bird, he gets so excited. Even when he sees Esty's dog slippers, he starts petting them and barking at them. April 2nd, 2006. Today I was playing with action figures with Lovey. There was one action figure with a gray beard. He decided to call that one Dad. He was happily shooting cannonballs on Dad, but every time he'd hit him, he'd say, Sorry, Dad. Careful, Dad. And kiss him. And then start shooting cannonballs at him again. August 12th, 2007. The best part about Lavi is how loving he is. He's always looking out for me to see if I'm cold or hungry or thirsty or wearing a seatbelt. When Akiva was born, Lavi was just amazing with him. He's always hugging and kissing his little brother and he gets seriously mad if anyone messes with him. Lavi is a very unique boy. I can really see he has a special neshama. February 12th, 2008. Lavi is obsessed with fighting bad guys. He particularly focuses his wrath on Romans and polluters, even though in reality he's the most gentle boy in the world. Lavi also has an imaginary friend named Hanant. He's half tiger, half man. He's a king who's like Hashem, just with a body. October 19th, 2010. Lavi is in first grade now. The other night, I decided to be a great mother, and even though I was so tired, I gathered all of my strength to have special talking time with Lavi in his bed. I gave the conversation a lot of thought. I was telling him stories from my childhood about resisting negative peer pressure. When we were done talking, I asked him, wasn't that an interesting talk we just had? Lovey looked at me and answered, that was the most boring thing that ever happened to me. Next time, could we talk about science or Torah or something? I told him next time would be an even more boring talk about appreciating his mother. January 14th, 2011. Yesterday, the boys were sitting at the kitchen table while I was making dinner, playing in the new computer game that Jeremy brought them from America. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Akiva looks at Lavi and says, You know, you're my best friend. And Lavi answered, Thank you, you're my best friend too. And they just carried on playing. February 27th, 2011. What a privilege it is to raise a child in Eretz Israel. Today, Lavi was telling me about a soccer game at school. The ball was about to go over the fence, and this is how he described it. So the shower was about 10 amot, no, maybe 5 amot high. I can't believe our child thinks in biblical measurements. October 3rd, 2011. Lavi is just the greatest kid. He has such an amazing heart. Today he asked me what to do. He saw a bird's nest and wanted to do shiluach haken, but he was worried that the mother would come back and be so sad. What about vasita et hayashar v'atov, he asked me. I said he should probably leave the birds alone since deforestation has made so many birds lose their habitats. Then he cried a lot about birds losing their habitats. July 7th, 2013. Lavi, you are such a special boy. Last night in the middle of the night, you came to my room and gave me 10 shekels of your own money, asking me to give tzedakah. I haven't given enough tzedakah lately, you said. When I gave the money to a woman who came to the door, you begged me to give her more and promised you'd pay me back. December 1st, 2013. The other day, the boys were watching a movie. Akiva did something wrong and I came to shut off the movie as a punishment. Without missing a beat, Lavi looked up at me and said, Haish echad yechta, ve'al kol ha'edati k'tzof? Zadie is in the hospital. He broke his hip and now he is sick with pneumonia. Lavi is so connected to Zadie. He's so concerned. He wrote him the cutest letter. These were his own words. Lamrot k'shei hazikna, im tachzor liot bari, lo edat nafshi merov simcha. 
Alba read the letter out loud to Zadie in the hospital and it really cheered him up. January 8th, 2015. Lord knows that Dreidel drives us crazy, but wow, does Lovey love him. Yesterday it was freezing outside, but after the dog made total destruction in the house, I had to put him outside for a while. When I went back to let him in, I see Lovey sitting out there, no jacket, no shoes, shivering, with Dreidel inside his shirt to keep him warm. That is true love. April 4th, 2016. Lovey, you love watching the news, but I mean love watching the news. Like you don't watch the news, you feel the news. Every single story in the news lights you up. Nothing passes you by. You have such strong opinions about everything. Everything matters to you. I don't think many parents have to threaten their kids. If you don't stop yelling at the news reporter, I'm going to have to march over there and shut off the news. January 1st, 2017. How am I going to get you to have a bar mitzvah party? Every time I ask you what you want at your party, you just say, I don't need a party. Save the money. Use it to buy trees for the farm. Lord. So now it's your bar mitzvah. Who are you, Lovey Gimpel? Everyone who knows you knows that you're smart, capable, talented, you're a great musician, you're opinionated, you're funny, you're handsome. But when I look back at these stories and when I put the pieces together, there's a pattern that jumps out at me. I think the thing I notice about you most is that you just care so much. You couldn't even have a bar mitzvah without dedicating it to a greater project for Am Yisrael and Eretz Yisrael. You care about people, you care about animals, you care about the world around you. You never let things just pass you by. You're never just a detached observer. You experience everything deep in your heart. It's not always easy to feel so much, but you never sit by. I believe so much that you'll harness this special quality that Hashem has given you and use it to become a Baal Chesed who will always be giving of himself to others. I know that you aren't gonna live life as a spectator at a football game. No, you don't know how to do that. You're going to get down on the field and play. And you're going to play the game hard. So, Lavi, this is the story of your life so far. The story we've tried to write for you. Thank you, Lavi. Thank you for making me into a mother. You made me as much as I made you. Thank you for giving me the greatest joy. For being such a special, wonderful little boy. It's so hard to say goodbye to you, my little boy. But I can't wait to meet the man that you'll soon become. I'm done writing your story now. Now it's time for you to get up, spread your rings, and write your own story. Let the Torah be your scroll, the mitzvot be your ink, your midot to vote will be your quill. Make your story marvelous, lovey. I know you will. We've given you as many tools as we know how, and you have so many people who love you, and they'll continue to guide you and help you on your way. You have parents, and we will always, always be there for you. You have siblings, grandparents, great-grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins. They all wrap you in love and support. And I know that even those who aren't here with us anymore will be watching you from Shemayim and cheering you on. And most of all, remember that Hashem is with you. He's your Father in Heaven. Dedicate your life to Him and turn to Him when you need help. I love you so much. Love, Ima.